Hi guys. So today we're going to look at solving cube root and square root equations and inequalities. So we're going to start with some pretty simple examples just to kind of get used to the process. Uh, typically whenever we're solving our goal here is to get the square root by itself. So that's going to be the first thing we do. So in this first one we'll start by dividing by 2. Then our next step is going to be to square both sides. So once our square root's by itself, we want to square both sides to get rid of that square root. And then at this point, we're left with x plus 2 equals 16, so x equals 14. Now with square root equations, like we've done throughout the year, we need to always make sure we check for extraneous solutions. So go back to the original, plug in 14 for x, and make sure that actually works out. Well, the square root of 16 is 4, and 2 times 4 is 8, so that is a solution to my equation. All right, very similar in b. The first thing I want to do is I want to get that root by itself. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And this time it's a cube root, so instead I'm going to cube both sides. The cube root is going to get rid of the cube, sorry, the cubing is going to get rid of the cube root. 5 cubed is 125, and then from this point on we're just solving for x. So add 5, divide by 2, and I get that x equals 65. Again, plug it back in, make sure it works, it does, um, and that is our solution. So now we're going to use the same process, just in a little bit more difficult of an example. All right, on this one, the square root is already by itself, so we don't need to move anything around. What I do need to do is go ahead and square both sides. But I need to remember, when you square the right side, you are not squaring the individual terms. You are squaring that entire quantity as a whole. And if you remember, x minus 4 squared is x minus 4 times x minus 4. So you can either foil it out, or square double square, and you end up with x squared minus 8x plus 16. So what we're left with now is a quadratic. So in order to solve a quadratic, I have to set it equal to 0. And then with that quadratic, let's see if we can factor. If we can, great. If not, then we're going to use another method. So what multiplies a 9 and adds a negative 10 gives me my factors, which gives me my two possible solutions. Well, now I need to test these and see if they actually work or if they're going to be an extraneous solution. So I'm going to plug them back into the original for x. So I'll start by plugging in 9. Well, 2 times 9 is 18 plus 7 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5, and I get 5 on the left side. If I plug in 9 to the right side, 9 minus 4 is 5. So that does work. So 9 is good. If I plug in 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 7 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. If I plug it into the other side, I get negative 3. So those are not the same, so x equals 1 is an extraneous solution. Now this is the only part that gets a little tricky. Sometimes when people look at this, they say, well the square root of 9, it's plus or minus 3. Now it is whenever we're solving a quadratic. So if I have, you know, x squared is equal to 9, yes, x could be both plus or minus 3. But this is a little different. We're talking about the square root function here, where it already tells you it is the square root of 9. Since we're given this square root function, that function there is just the positive square root. If we wanted the negative square root, it would tell us, hey, this is the negative square root. So in this case, it's got to equal that positive value. All right, so then let's go on to B. Uh, again, very similar, so if you feel comfortable, pause the video and try this one on your own. All right, so square both sides. Square double square on the right side. It's quadratic, so set it equal to 0. And then we can go ahead and factor. So I get negative 7, 2. So my possible answers are x equals 7 and x equals negative 2. Again, plug them back into the original and let's see if they actually work. Well, if I plug in 7, 7 times 7 is 49. 49 plus 15 is 64. The square root of 64 is 8. Plug it into this side, 7 plus 1 is 8, so 7 does work. Now let's try negative 2. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. Negative 14 plus 15 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. So that answer does not work. All right, 
so let's move on. We're going to try the next set is kind of the hardest setup. It's still the same type of algebra, but uh, it's just a little bit trickier because we've got some extra steps. So in this case, we can't get one square root by itself. We've got a square root on both sides. They don't have the same thing under the radical, so we can't combine them together. What we can do is go ahead and square both sides. And now this is where it gets a little bit tricky is when we're squaring this left side. So again, I can still square the first, multiply and double, and square the last to get that part here. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like if we FOIL it so you can see both versions. So when I FOIL, the square root of x plus 6 times the square root of x plus 6 is x plus 6. Then I get plus 1 times the square root of x plus 6 plus 1 times the square root of x plus 6 plus 1. Well, the square root of x plus 6 and the square root of x plus 6 can get combined together. I'll go ahead and also combine the 6 and the 1. And I get 2 square roots of x plus 6. And then the whole time, the right side was easy. Squaring it just got rid of the square root. So now, at this point, we just have another square root equation. So in order to solve this, I need to get my new square root by itself. So I'm going to subtract x and subtract 7, which puts me at a negative 2x. Divide both sides by 2. And then at this point, I can go ahead and square both sides. Now again, I'm squaring this whole thing. I'm doing negative x times negative x, which is now a positive x squared. Then again, we've got a quadratic, so set it equal to 0. Factor, and I get x equals 3, and x equals negative 2. Again, take your answers, plug them back into the original. If I plug in 3, 3 plus 6 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. If I plug in 3 over here, 7 minus 3 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So that does not work. If I plug in negative 2, negative 2 plus 6 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 2 over here, 7 minus negative 2 becomes 7 plus 2, which is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3, which is 2 plus 1. So that answer does work. All right, B is very similar to that last example, except in order to make this easier, it's really hard to square this side. It gets pretty messy on the algebra. So I'm going to rearrange it to make it look like that first one. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add that x minus 2 square root to the other side. Now it's in a similar format to the question we just did, and we're going to follow the same process. So again, if you feel comfortable, pause the video, try this one on your own. All right, so I'm going to square both sides. And this time, instead of foiling it, I'm just going to go ahead and do the square and double square. So I would square. I would multiply and double. So 2 times the square root of x minus 2 doubled would be 4 square root of x minus 2. And then square the last. So then at this point, we've got another square root that we need to get by itself. Well, I've got x plus 2 now, plus 4, if I combine those together. So I'm going to subtract x and subtract 2. Divide both sides by 4. And square both sides. So I end up with just one possible solution. And if I plug it back in, it does work, and it's not extraneous. All right, so the last type of equation that we're going to look at are those that have rational exponents. So for these rational exponent equations, it's very similar to what we've been doing. We need to get the part that has the exponent by itself. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this 2 that's outside here, we cannot distribute it into those parentheses because that 2 does not have that exponent. We cannot combine it inside there. So what, again, I need to do is I need to get this part by itself. So we'll start by subtracting 2. Then I'll divide by 2. So now I need to get rid of that 3 fourths exponent. Well, I can do that by raising both sides to an exponent. So what I want to do is I want to raise this to the 4 thirds power. Because when you raise a power to a power, you multiply those exponents. And 3 fourths times 4 thirds is just 1. 
Now, 8 to the 4 thirds, that's the cube root of 8, which is 2. 2 to the 4th is 16. So I end up with x equals 16 over 3. All right, again, if you feel comfortable, pause the video and try b on your own. All right, so on b, I would start by adding 60. And then I'll raise both sides to that reciprocal exponent. So I'll raise it to the 2 thirds. So x plus 3. The cube root of 64 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So x equals 13. All right, so the next section, um, honors, you guys did not have these on yours. Uh, GT did, so if you're in honors, if you want to just go ahead and skip these, or if you just want to see them just for extra practice, you can. Um, these are called literal equations. So a lot of you guys have probably seen these in physics. Um, you may have seen them in SAT and ACT prep. But really all this is is an equation full of variables. So we're still going to do the same process to solve this, but we're just going to have our answer in terms of other letters. So I want to get this h by itself. Well, the first thing I need to do is get rid of that square root. So now I can either cross multiply or multiply both sides by pi over h. And here's what I end up with, which may look like a familiar formula. That is the volume of a cylinder. Then what we're going to do to get h by itself is we're going to divide by what's with it. So I end up with h equals v over pi r squared. All right, looking at c, or at 6, there's a couple different ways you can do this, and you can get your answer in a couple different forms. The way I'm going to go about doing this is the way I think is the easiest uh, with trying to not rationalize. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, and also we should not be solving for h, that is a copy and paste mistake, we're going to square both sides. So now, again, I can either cross multiply or multiply both sides by the denominator, either way. And now, again, you've got a couple different options here. You can divide by a squared and then go from there. I'm going to go ahead and distribute, though, because it's going to be just a little bit easier on my algebra with my fractions. So I'm going to subtract a squared. I'm going to divide by negative 4. I forgot to distribute my a squared over here. So I'm dividing by... 4a squared, sorry about that. So that at this point, I need to square root this. Now the problem is, I, can't, I don't want the square root of a fraction, okay, because I usually need to rationalize. So I want to make this to where I don't need to rationalize and I don't have a square root in a fraction. Well, the, new, the denominator right now is negative 4a squared. Well, 4a squared is pretty easy to take the square root of. The problem is that right now it's negative. So I need to rewrite this. Now what I can do is I can basically multiply the top and bottom by negative 1. And that's going to give me an equivalent expression. So now when I take the square root, I can take the square root of the top and the bottom. So this would be a squared minus 1. And this would just be 2a at the bottom. Now that I'm taking a square root, we do need to include plus or minus. But that's my value of b. Again, there's a lot of different ways you can get there. I just think that's kind of the simplest way to get there without having to worry about rationalizing. All right, so what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at inequalities. So with inequalities, the process to solve it is very similar to what we've been doing, but there is an additional step we need to consider due to the domain of the square root function. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the square root of x by itself, which is what we've been doing with our solving. So I'm going to add 4, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, square both sides, and I end up with part of my solution. Now the problem with the solution is this solution says every value less than negative, or less than 256. The problem is if I were to pick a negative number for x, that wouldn't actually work for my problem because I can't take the square root of a negative number. So in addition to our solution, there's another thing we need to consider, and that is the domain of that square root function. So to find the domain, what we do is we take whatever is under the square root, in this case it's x, and we make it greater than or equal to 0. So 
So now our solution is where both of those things are true. And we're going to write that solution to interval notation. So again, just like with absolute value inequalities, sometimes it's easier to see it on a number line. So I'm going to go ahead and graph where it's less than or equal to 256, greater than or equal to 0. So the overlap where both of those things are true is my solution. And that is from 0 to 256. All right, let's look at B. So same thing, get the root by itself. Cube both sides. Subtract 1. But this time, it's a cube root. Cube roots don't have domain restrictions. So I don't need to worry. This actually is negative infinity to 63. All right, so one thing to pay attention to here as well are the parentheses and the brackets. So notice here, because it was less than, not or equal to, we used a parenthesis. Over here on this problem, it was less than or equal to, so we used a bracket. Now the domain was also greater than or equal to. We'll always use greater than or equal to for our domain. So the part that has the domain also has a bracket. But if this original problem was different, and it was just, it was too thick of a marker, sorry. Let's say it was just less than, well then that would no longer be a bracket, that would then become a parenthesis. So you could have two different things on your interval. One could be a bracket and one could be a parenthesis. That is possible. But domain will always set it up where whatever is under the root greater than or equal to zero. All right, let's try a couple more. So same thing, let's start just by solving it. Let's get the square root by itself. This is three times the square root, by the way. That is not a cube root. Square both sides. All right, so that's the solution to my inequality. Now I also need to consider the domain. So I take, in addition to this, whatever is under the root and set it greater than or equal to 0. So I end up with x is greater than or equal to 1 half. So I need to find where both of these things are true. Well, if x is greater than 5, won't x also always be greater than or equal to 1 half? So in this case, the domain is actually part of our original solution. But again, let's go ahead and look at it in a number line just to make sure. So here's 5, everything greater. Here's 1 half, everything greater. And the overlap happens from everything over here. So an interval notation that's 5 with a parenthesis until infinity. All right, let's try this next one. Also label this C, so some bad numbering. We're going to square both sides. So 5x minus 16 is less than or equal to 2x minus 4. So 3x is less than or equal to 12, and x is less than or equal to 4. So that's my solution here. But now I've got two domains to worry about. So I'm going to start with the first domain. 5x minus 16. So whatever is under the root, we set that greater than or equal to 0. So this is the domain of the first function. Well, we also have to consider the domain of the second function. So now I have three different inequalities that I need to consider. So all three of these things need to be true. So I'm going to plot them on my number line. And again, I need to find the place where all three of these overlap. So there's 2. So greater than or equal to 2. 16 over 5, that's more than 2. And then less than or equal to 4. So my solution is the place where all three of those colors are. So that interval is from... 16 over 5 to 4. Both of them have brackets because they were less than or equal to or greater than or equal to for all of them. All right, the last two cases are the least amount of work with the most amount of thought. So what we do here, we get the square root by itself again. If I divide by negative 4, remember when you divide by negative, you flip the sign. But now we need to stop and think. Okay, this is very similar to what happened with absolute value inequalities. I have a square root function. Well, we just talked about how the square root function 
was not going to be negative. If it's negative, it'll tell us that it's a negative out in front. So that square root is going to be a positive number. If you think about it graphically, this square root of 2x minus 3 is over here getting stretched horizontally or compressed horizontally. That function is always going to be above the line negative 3. So this case is always going to be true. That square root will always give us a positive number that will always be greater than a negative. Well, if that's the case, then it's not all real numbers, though. So it's a little bit harder than absolute value inequalities. It's all real numbers as long as it's within the domain of the original question. So this answer is all numbers within the domain. So we still find the domain. So we still take whatever is under the root greater than or equal to 0. And then we're going to write that in interval notation to get our answer. All right, and the last one. Again, divide both sides by negative 4. When you divide by negative, you flip the sign. And again, very similar. Square roots by itself, negative on the, on the other side. Stop and think. That square root is going to give us a positive answer. It is never going to be less than a negative. So as a result, this has no solution. All right, let's say we forgot, and let's say we tried to work this out, and I got 2x minus 3 is less than 9, and I got that x is less than 6. Well, if I pick a test point in this region, um, let's say I pick 1 and a half. Okay, so if I were to pick 1 and a half, that would give me 3 minus 3, which is 0, and negative 4 times 0. Well, negative 4 times 0 is not greater than 12. That's not a true statement. So all of this that we got here is just an extraneous solution. So we don't want to do all that extra work for a wrong answer. As soon as you get the square root by itself, if there's a negative on the, on the other side, you need to stop and think about what that means for your problem. All right, so that's it for square root and cube root equations and inequalities. We got one more day over inverses, and then we're going to move on to a new unit.